my name is Aritra and today we are going to start a new series on abstract algebra. Most of us have studied normal algebra in high school and even to some extent linear algebra in plus 2. But what is abstract algebra? Hmm. Before I get started with abstract algebra and go into its nitty gritties, I would like to give an example on abstraction. What is abstraction? And house B. House A has three properties P1, P2, and P3. House B has three properties as well P3, P4, and P5. Now, suppose there is a person who wants to study about houses with property P3. So, what will the person do? It is difficult to study uh, the houses individually because they have properties other than P3. So, the person creates a hypothetical house with the given property P3. Mm -hmm. Okay, now this person who is a house researcher will study this hypothetical abstract house which does not exist in real life and find the characteristics of it. Now the characteristics which he finds for this hypothetical house can be applied to the house A and house B because both of them have the property P3. It can be applied to any house with the property P3. Okay, so I hope this did make some sense. So now coming back into the point, what is abstract algebra? Abstract algebra is the study of abstract algebraic structure. The point uh, depends a lot on each subbranch, but the big picture is what I said, algebraic structures of some sort. So, what is an algebraic structure? In high school, you have learned about many polynomials, properties of real and complex numbers. You maybe learn about how to do factorizations of some sort and solving equations. Well, the set of all polynomials are an algebraic structure and so are the set of all real and complex numbers and so are the integers and the other things you have been taught before. The deal here is study big collection of algebraic structures and classify them. Okay, and I'll start by giving an abstract or a broad description of what we'll understand as an algebraic structure. Okay, let's think about integers. What can you say about them? You have two usual operations, right? Addition and multiplication of integers. And But there is more to say about in operations. Uh, for example, we know that a plus b is always equal to b plus a. And a plus 0 is always equal to a. And a into 1 is always equal to a. b into 1 is always equal to b as well and b plus 0 is always equal to b for all integers a and b. So let's say you want to study about integers in an abstract way and study things apart from integers that work in same way as the integers so that you have an integer like structure. Uh, suppose they can be anything like a set of emojis smiley emoji, the sad emoji, and the heart emoji, and so on and so forth, which behave like an integers. So, we also have operations which operate two things in your set, and you end up with another thing in your set. Uh, also, you can impose those same nice characteristics like we had said before. For example, uh, the smiley emoji plus zero will be the smiley emojis. Okay, and smiley emoji plus sad emoji 
be equal to sad emoji plus smile emoji. And we will also have these two special elements 0 and 1 in this uh, set. Okay, okay. So I'll give you one more example. Suppose you have a collection of 1 and 0 uh, with the usual multiplication and addition, but they're slightly altered. For example, 1 plus 1 will be 0 and everything else remains the same. So it isn't very hard to observe that whatever elements you operate in this set, you end up with any of the same elements. For example, AB will always be equal to BA, A star 1 will always be equal to A and B plus 0 will always be equal to B. Aha! Uh -huh. We can say more things about integers and we could have added those nice properties of integers to this what we call integer like structure. For example, uh, we know that every integer has a negative. So like a plus minus a equal to 0. But this fails for multiplication. Since any number other than 1 or minus 1 wouldn't have any other element in the integers such that a into b equal to 1. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, this is the gist of what we can understand as an algebraic structure. So there is this one more important thing. I would like to cover in this introductory video which is insolvability of quintic polynomials. This involves something called Galois theory. I won't go much into the details of Galois theory right now. We are saving it for the later lectures. Okay, suppose there are polynomials of various degrees. Degree 1, degree 2, degree 3, degree 4, and degree 5. Polynomial of degree 1 x plus 1, polynomial of degree 2 x square plus 2x plus 5 no, of degree 3 is x cube plus some k x square something something c d4 x to the power 4 plus k prime x cube dot 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 some constant c prime d5 x to the power 5 plus k double prime x to the power 4 something something c double prime Okay, so we are very well versed with the formula for the general solution of degree 2 polynomials, which is the Sridhar Acharya's formula. And for degree 1, it is very trivial to solve. It is just a uh, linear equation okay uh, for degree 3 there exists uh, this formula for the general solution okay this formula does appear a bit complicated and we generally do not learn it in school surprisingly there is a formula for degree 4 as well Okay, this formula is quite big and it is definitely not possible to remember this. Okay, now for degree 5, there is no such formula for the general solution. Uh -huh. So, this might come into mind that is there a formula which exists for degree 5 polynomials or are they even solvable? Okay, here comes into play uh, abstract algebra. 
There is something called permutation groups. Uh, permutation groups is a uh, algebraic structure. And it is known to directly link with polynomials. Uh, I won't talk about how it exactly links because it does involve some technical terms, but it links. There is some relation. Also, permutation group is denoted by Sn, which is permutation group of size n. So, permutation of group of size 1 relates with polynomial of ring V1. S2 links with poly of degree 2, S3 with poly of degree 3, and so on and so forth. Now, uh, if the general solution of these polynomials exists, depends upon the structure of this permutation group. If the structure is simple, uh, there is a general solution. And if it is not, uh, there is no general solution. Now, it has been seen that uh, permutation group of size 5 does not have a simple structures uh, like permutation group of size 4, size 3, size 2, and size 1. And therefore, uh, there is no solution for polynomials of degree 5. Okay. I hope this did make some sense and I have been able to give some idea on why abstract algebra is important. I will go into the details of it in a proper structured manner in the upcoming videos. About the structure of the video series, there will be two videos per week. Starting from 28th of September, there will also be P sets with each video. Okay, so I'm looking forward to this series and I hope you will like it. So, see you in the next video. Subscribe uh, to Grammarly and like this video and share it with your friends.